So, we are back with another video which is related to understanding food and diabetes a little better. We all have a lot of information about what is diabetes or the foods that we need to consume or avoid. But there is one topic that is not discussed very often and will have a great impact on helping us manage our sugar levels better. I hope you heard something which is called as glycemic index of foods or glycemic load of food. So in this video, we are going to talk about these two concepts which are not discussed very often. So let's have, the, have a look at what do we understand by glycemic index first. Glycemic index or GI as it is commonly known talks about how fast a food is digested in our stomach and the potential the food has to raise our blood sugar levels or the speed at which it raises our blood sugar levels. Foods with different glycemic index are predominantly categorized into three categories. I know this is a little technical, but if you have, if you are trying to manage your sugar levels better, this will definitely make sense. Foods which have a glycemic index of val uh, between values between 20 to 49 are called foods with a low GI or low glycemic index foods. Foods with GI between 50 to 69 are called foods with medium GI and foods with a GI of 70 to 100 are called foods with a high glycemic index which means they raise our blood sugar levels faster and higher. So for example watermelon has a glycemic index of 80 which means it falls between 70 to 100 and technically is a high glycemic index food whereas foods like brown rice or gluten which means wheat for have a glycemic index that ranges between 60 to 70. So they fall between foods that have a glycemic index of medium value. Whereas something like a boiled carrot will have a glycemic index of low glyce uh, will, will have a glycemic index of something like 39, right? So which will fall under the low glycemic index foods. At the end of the video, we'll be sharing a list of foods with different GI, also a list of foods with different glycemic load. Because understanding glycemic load independently is half the information. Let's have a look at what do we mean by glycemic load and how do we merge the information to help us manage sugar better. So now we have a look at what do we mean by glycemic load of foods. So glycemic index and glycemic load are two different concepts that we are talking today. Whereas when glycemic index talks about the rate at which the food raises the blood sugar, glycemic load takes into consideration the portion size of the food. So I purposely mentioned watermelon as an example because watermelon is a food with a high GI but with a low glycemic load. How do we understand that difference because it looks a little complicated. As you can see on the screen right now, there is a formula that talks to you about calculating the glycemic load of foods which is dividing the glycemic index of food by 100 and multiplying it by the carbohydrate content of the food. So for example, we take a cup of watermelon at a time to consume which is approximately 11 grams of carbohydrates for example. How do we calculate the glycemic load? It all looks complicated but it is not as difficult as it sounds. So we will calculate the glycemic load for watermelon right now. When we say the glycemic index of watermelon is 80, to be precise it is 76. So we divide 76 by 100 which is around and multiplied by 11 which is the carbohydrate content of a serving of watermelon. So the glycemic load of watermelon is around 7 to 8 which is in the low glycemic load category. Now the, as we discussed there are three categories that talk about glycemic index. There are, the glycemic load is also divided into three areas. Foods with low glycemic load fall and uh, are the ones that have a value which is less than 10. Foods with a glycemic load of value between 10 to 20 are considered as foods with medium glycemic load whereas more than 20 are fall, those, those foods fall under glycemic load which are, have a higher glycemic load. So even if watermelon has a high glycemic index, it falls under the category of foods with a lower glycemic load and that is also something that we need to consider when we are planning what we need to eat and hence Consulting a professional dietitian or a nutritionist, especially when you are trying to manage your sugar levels, becomes important because once you get comfortable with these concepts, you can master the art of controlling what you eat and how to manage your sugar levels better. 
So I hope you can have a clear look at the foods with high glycemic index and foods with different glycemic loads. And if you have any query, all your queries can be put into the comment box and we will happily get back to you. If you like the video, please share it with your friends, please subscribe to our channel, please like the video and let's spread more information about managing diabetes better. Have a good day. Bye-bye.